Good afternoon, everybody. We're here to get a demonstration of an outstanding thesis effort by Tobias Brennerstuhl. Colonel Brennerstuhl has shown how to do unit testing of DIS streams. We can record those streams and play them back and see if they work. You can also create different encodings of them to facilitate reuse and Perhaps most wonderfully, he's able to turn those into X3D interpolators, X3D graphics, so that we can animate objects as a playback of these live virtual constructor streams. And so he's going to demonstrate his work that's all checked in to version control and the OpenDIS version 7 Java implementation. Okay, uh, Colonel Brennerstuhl, please. Okay, thank you, Don, for this introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Um, today I'm going to talk about my thesis work. The work of my thesis started back in uh, about 10 months ago with a directed study. I took a class by Don Brotsman introducing me to X3D, and I started very low level um, with X3D with uh, two scenes I'm going to show now. Um, the first scene is called Hello Germany. It's one of the Hello World part of the Hello World examples made for X3D by other students. Um, it's just set up as uh, three solid blocks with uh, two text nodes in X3D, so you can rotate it. And when you rotate it, um, you can see that the flag is actually made out of three solid blocks, uh, colored in uh, three different colors. It has uh, special characters in there. The German hard S is here, and this one, the instant reality player, is handling this one very well. The second example I came up with was using extrusions. I created a ring using extrusions and copied this ring using use and de uh, def and use to create the Olympic rings I'm going to show now. There they are. The Olympic rings, the left one on the top, the blue one is created using def, and all the other rings are created using use. And you see those intersections, and those intersections are made by sheeting a little bit and just twisting the rings. You can see them when you, when you line them like this, uh, twisting the rings a little bit so the intersections match original image I grabbed from Wikipedia as, in, as a blueprint for my X3D scene. So those two examples just helped me to get into X3D. And Another software I used to get started for my, uh, to my thesis was uh, VR Forces. We had a class about VR Forces and how to use it. Um, I will pull up a video. Let me stop this video. This is a screen capture by VR Forces. This area is located on Hawaii. And in one class, we learned how to set up entities, how to set up routes, and how to make entities move around. And VR Forces has one big advantage. It is sending out DS packages, and it's very easy to capture them using Java classes provided by the OpenDIS library. So I set up this single entity that's an SUV, and this SUV is going around blocks. Uh, I made this uh, shape a little bit more complicated to have a challenge for X3D. And when we start the video, you can see this entity is going to the track and then just following the track. I don't want to bore you and do a little time lapse. So what you can see is a slowing down for taking uh, turns. And after turns, it's accelerating again to its uh, predefined speed. And there it goes. Yeah. So the whole video takes about six minutes. This one was recorded using NetBeans. 
uh, when you record this using NetBeans and you change the encoding of the file to plain text, it will produce an output file. I renamed this because all the files are named PDU log uh, with a number on it, dot dislog to remember which file I used, or I record, recorded from the scene and to match it to the video of the scene, I named them. OpenDS is able to handle them even for playback. So when I open this file, we can see the plain text encoding. Every line is one DIS packet. And when I uh, scroll to the end of the file, you can see that we have 1,223 lines with DRS packages, if, and we have to subtract the first line. So we have 1,222 DRS packages within uh, six minutes, and they're all representing only one entity. This created file is now being uh, read, read back by the PDU reader and player file. PDU reader and player is part of the OpenDS 7 distribution. We adapted, we adapted this one a little bit so we can change the encoding from plain text to uh, base64. Um, and when I now run this file, it will read in the file and uh, produce a bunch of numbers. But when we go over it, you will see that this is actually X3D code in the output window. And um, when we start over here, we have we will have a PDU. We will have a, a time sensor with a, PD, a called PDU stream clock and a cycle interval of 384 seconds. So if you divide this by 60, you will get about to six minutes and 20 seconds. And that's what what was the length of the video or the length of the demonstration and your forces. It is creating a position interpolator. It is creating an orientation interpolator for each axis, for Z, for Y, and for X. See this over here. It is, uh, additionally, it will create some code for a waypoint interpolator we used in a later part of the thesis. And it's creating a line set, and an X3D line set. And this X3D line set is just representing the route the entity was traveling on in uh, VR forces. This line set has a vertex count of 775. In my thesis, there is a switch where we can turn off the compression. I will do this now to show you how the compressions work. In my thesis, there is a, I, I documented this in code, in line. There are two lines, you just have to comment one out and one in build them real quick. And when we now run this again, the last part of a line vertex count will be only 177 instead of 775. We did this with a little regression window. So if you are interested in this, um, just refer to my thesis. And you can read a chapter about this, how this regression with a sliding window algorithm works. Um, what we can do now is we can copy we can copy all those numbers. I will just do this for the interpolators. Copy the interpolators. And the time sensor. Going back to X3D. And plugging them in into the scene. You see here, they have the time sensor and the position interpolators, and I just remove those lines, put them in. Okay, so we now take the output and just copy all those lines up to the time sensor, copy it, and going over to X3D to the scene I prepared for testing. And we can now just replace those scenes and uh, fingers crossed that this one works. I just save this and we use instant reality. Now let's use Octagon Player and run this scene. It takes some time to load because we have a bunch of vertexes. And 
Before we go into detail, you see the scene is already running. You see a, a white vertex line and you see a red vertex line. I prepared, some, uh, prepared something uh, before this presentation. When we go up here, you see the line set with vertex count 775. That's the original line set produced without any compression. And this one is red. And I copied already copied the line set with the 177 uh, vertexes and uh, marked it white. So when we go to the output, you can see that the white line set and the red line set match pretty good. Um, the threshold for matching the lines can be adjusted in code. So if you're not satisf satisfied with this level of compression, you can reduce the level of compression or adjust it in another way. Um, I will just try real quick to get a good to get a good view for you. I think this one will do. And let me grab the picture where we can see where we can see the track in X3D. And now we can see the, the entity is in, in this turn and it will turn over. Um, it will turn it, it take an, a couple of turns and you will see the entity slowing down. So as it is approaching the curve, you see it will slow down, take a left turn and accelerate. So it's, it's matching the, the recorded stream pretty good. So, so a uh, question, question, Toby, this geometric compression of filtering, smoothing, subsampling points is a great way to think about things. Let's say again, how many line segments were in the full fidelity recording and then in your distill distillation version? A high fidelity version um, without any compression is 775 vertexes. And after compressing it with uh, the threshold I initially came up with, so without playing around, just the first guess, it's 177. So we are roughly about, I think, 20-ish uh, 20, 20 percent of the original points. Thank you very much. OK. We can do this again for a smaller block just to see just to show you this one is not be made up so you can uh, try to do it on your own i have another example the example where this entity is going just one block so i will i will read on read in this one real quick in netbeans and put this on file what you have to do um, we have a pdu backup and a pdu log you have to remove the PDU log. I copied this one so I can just delete it. And then I just grab the gas 69 single block plain text. I copy it and put it into the PDU log. PDU log is uh, the place where the reader and player is looking for, for code. When I run this now, You see, um, it's only single block. We have a lot less code um, for this example. So I will copy the code, put it into X3D, replace the time sensors. You see now the time sensor is only 83 seconds. So this simulation is only running about one minute. And I, I will show you what happens when you don't copy the, the line sets. It does not hurt, but the line set and the animation are not matching. So I just run this and You see, we, st we still have the line set.
but after the first block, this entity will, will take a left turn and it will not match the complete animation. So for this scene, I will just copy all the stuff we have in here, going to X3D, putting the values in there. and copy the other numbers for the line set. This one is a compressed line set. So I will copy it to the white part. And now I will do the uncompressed one and uh, copy it to the red part. Therefore, for the line set, I just turn off the compression again, like I did before. Save, do a clean build, and run this. And now instead of 33 vertexes, we have 191. And I will copy them to the former red part. Okay, now we can see the compression is 191 to 35, so about one sixth of the initial size. And when we now go to the octagon player, I will zoom out a bit and grab this other image for you, put them side by side um, to let you judge whether this animation is running good, uh, is looking good or not. There we are at the end of the track. You see this open track X3D and then the entity will jump to the beginning of the track and keep going again. And you see, melting it down from 191 vertexes to 33 doesn't hurt the fidelity of the scene a bit. Okay. So this was my th thesis, although it, it's not looking uh, that much, um, coming up with those code was uh, sometimes very challenging. And uh, I ask a lot of questions to Don about X3D because X3D is a wonderful tool, but it's very, very complicated. You have to spend a lot of time to get uh, high fidelity scenes. You have a very steep uh, learning curve, but once you master it, fun to play with it. I will go back to Germany for my next assignment to the Bundeswehr Office for Defense Planning. Um, it will be the directorate of scientific support. So hopefully in my future, one of my future appointments, I have the chance to work with OpenDRS and NPS again. So feel free to use my code for any work in the future you want to. I'm happy to hear from you if you have any questions about my thesis. Toby, thank you. That's really wonderful. And good hallmark of important work is that it encourages other work to continue. So you'll be keeping us busy here, deploying this code, uh, making it easy to record playback of live virtual constructive simulations, and finally to perform unit testing. So this can not just be a strenuous live spur of the moment kind of thing, but it's just part of our regular build of making recordings and playing them back and upgrading the software and making sure everything still works exactly well. Okay, good luck in your next efforts, Toby. Thank you.